good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good whenever you happen to be watching this video. And hello! I am, of course, Mr. Paul, and welcome to another installment of Mr. Paul's Kingdom Kids. This is the last week of our How to Train Your Emotions study. Just a four-weeker. We talked about anger, we talked about fear, we talked about sadness, and now we get to kick it up a notch into the happy zone and talk about joy! Finally, an emotion that isn't negative. Let's do this. Since this is the end of the How to Train Your Emotions study, this is the last time we'll be going over the memory verse that goes with the series. Remember, it is Psalm 9-2. I will be glad and full of joy because of you. Most high God, I will sing the praises of your name. Let's revisit some of the highlights over the last three weeks of learning this verse. Most High God, I will sing the praises of your name. By George, we should sing a song together. Psalm 9-2 I will be glad and full of joy because of you. Most High God, I will sing the praises of your name. Let's sing! Okay, ready. Country. <clears throat> I will be glad and full of joy because of you. Most High God, I will sing the praises of your name. A big, big table with lots and lots of food. I will be glad and full of joy because of you. Most high God, I will sing the praises of your name. It's my father's house. Poignant, isn't it? Uh I will be glad and full of joy because of you. Most high God, I will sing the praises of your name. Of uh, praises? I will sing before the praises? No, no, a potato. Not potato again. Every time we have a memory verse problem, you start thinking with your stomach. I, Psalm 9-2. I will be glad and full of joy because of... Pota just kidding. You. Most high God, I will sing the praises of your name. Woo, Bob. High five. Oh, you got to get a hand up when I come at you, bro. Uh. Yeah, it's my father's house. All right, so last thing left to do is I will sort of murmur through the verse just to give you the rhythm and give you all a chance to say it by yourselves and just try to keep rhythm with me so we can all say it together. Okay, I'll say the reference where it's found at and then I'll start mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, along and you can say the words along with it. Psalm 9-2. Mm-hmm, that's right! Yeah. Woo! Yeah! I am having a wonderful day. I am feeling it today. What is wrong with you today? Wrong? Nothing's wrong, bro. I got the joy. You got the joy? You bet I do. How could you got the joy? We had another pop quiz at school. Yep, we did. We went out first in dodgeball. You bet we did. We have to go to the doctor's office later. Yes, we do. And get a flu shot. Woo, that's going to sting. And to top it all off, our hamster died. Doesn't matter, Mr. Torso, sir. I still got the joy. And why is that? Because I got Jesus, bro. <laughs> I should have known. Hey everyone, it's Torso Bob again. For the last four weeks, we've been talking about how to train our emotions. As you can see, mine have come a long, long way. I got the joy, baby. My emotions used to be overwhelmed by anger, fear, and sadness. 
but I've learned to focus on Jesus. And Jesus replaces those emotions with joy, baby. That's right, joy. Joy is more than a feeling. It's knowing that no matter what happens, God loves us. He's in control, and he will always be by our side. Right here, baby. Right next to me. I hope these training sessions have helped you. They certainly helped me. And me! Come on, buddy. Time for the doctor's office. Woo! I hope I get a toy from the prize box today. That's not this doctor. That's the dentist. Can we go see him, too? Hey, Bob. What you up to here? Oh, playing some Xbox? I, I thought we could get outside and do something instead of you just sitting around playing this all day. Yeah, I got an idea. Let's play extreme hide and seek. Okay, how does that work? Okay, I'll give you a minute head start. You go out the front door and start counting. Then I'll go hide somewhere and you look all over around the house and try to find me. All right, you're on. I'm out of here. Nope, not here. Get to me and I'll say it. Nope, not here. Nope, not here. Nope, not here. Nope, not here. Nope, not up here. Not down here. Nope, not in here. What are you? Have you been in here the whole time? <laughs> Sucker. The How to Train Your Dragon stories are full of emotions like the ones we've discussed for the past month. We see anger, we see fear, we see sadness, yet in the end, like any great children's story, these negative emotions give way to a happy ending. Things turn out for the best for Hiccup, for Toothless, for the Vikings, and for the dragons. There are many ups and downs to the story and many challenges to overcome, but in the end, all's well that ends well. In this series, we've talked about taming our emotions. We've addressed the difficulty of dealing with anger in all its forms. We've talked about the crippling power of fear. We've talked about the overwhelming power of sadness. In every one of our lessons, the solution to training our emotions comes back to one thing, our faith in God. When we remember God's blessings, we can overcome our anger. Counting our blessings reminds us of all the good things God has given us, and it helps us to get over our angry feelings. When we are afraid, we can remember God is in control. We know that God will protect us in the storms of life, and God will always be with us. When we are sad, we can remember God's love. We can find comfort in that love, and God can help us to carry us through those sad times. Whatever emotions we face, God's love and grace can replace that emotion with joy. Even in the worst of times and the worst of places, God can fill our hearts with joy. Today's Bible story will take us into a prison cell in the dead of night, where two wrongfully accused missionaries were not only able to find joy, but share that joy with others. Okay, the scripture reading that goes along with the lesson today is from the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 22 through 34. The crowd joined the attack against Paul and Silas. The judges ordered that Paul and Silas be stripped and beaten with rods. They were whipped without mercy. Then they were thrown into prison. The jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put Paul and Silas deep inside the prison. He fastened their feet so they couldn't get away. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying. They were also singing hymns to God. The other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a powerful earthquake. It shook the prison from top to bottom. All at once the prison doors flew open. Everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up. He saw that the prison doors were open. He pulled out his sword and was going to kill himself. He thought the prisoners had escaped. Don't harm yourself, Paul shouted. We're all here. The jailer called out for some lights. He rushed in, shaking with fear. He fell down in front of Paul and Silas. 
Then he brought them out. He asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus. Then you and everyone living in your house will be saved. They spoke the word of the Lord to him. They also spoke to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took Paul and Silas and washed their wounds. Right away he and everyone who lived with him were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house. He set a meal in front of them. He and everyone who lived with him were filled with joy. They had become believers in God. Paul and Silas were thrown in prison for setting a girl free from demons. How dare they, right? They had done something good through the power of God and they were being punished for it. Many believers were facing similar persecution at the time, including prison, beatings, and even death. Paul and Silas had to know that death was a possibility for them. They had every right to feel angry, afraid, and sad. Yet Paul and Silas were joyful. They led the prisoners in singing hymns, and when God heard their song of praise, he shook the walls of the prison to the ground. When the earthquake happened, it was the jailer who suddenly felt afraid. He believed the prisoners would escape, and he and his family would be killed. When he saw the faith of Paul and Silas, he prayed to receive Jesus as his Savior. Jesus turned the jailer's fear into joy, just as he turned Paul and Silas's despair into joy. If Jesus can bring joy into that darkened prison, he can bring joy to anyone, anytime, and anywhere. When we focus on God, even in bad times, we can have joy. Emotions are how we experience life. Some emotions are positive, some are negative. All emotions are an important part of being a human being, even anger, fear, and sadness. But if we let those negative emotions run unchecked, they can bring us down and even get us into trouble. Jesus wants to help us tame our emotions. He wants to give you the Holy Spirit who can lift you up when you're sad. He wants us to rely on prayer and the Bible when we need courage. He wants us to have peace and he'll give it to us when we are troubled. He wants to fill our hearts with joy even in bad times. If you're tired of trying to tame your emotions on your own, you can invite Jesus to be your savior today. You can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit who will be by your side in good times and in bad. When you ask Jesus to forgive your sins and come into your life, you will receive the blessing of eternal life. You will also know that God is always a prayer away, right by your side. If you've already received Jesus and are still struggling with your emotions, take heart. You are not alone. It takes a lifetime to learn to rely on God to tame our emotions. Day by day, one emotion at a time, one prayer at a time. God will help us transform our bad emotions into joy. Jesus came to give us new life and joy. If we focus on God, we can have that joy. No matter what life brings our way, let's thank God for Jesus and let's ask him to fill all of our hearts with joy. Lord, we do want to thank you for Jesus this morning, the gift that he came to save us from our sins and that he always loves us and he wants to help us turn all our negatives into joy, to find our peace in him. Amen. I have so many questions right now. Yeah, questions and answers. Let's get into the questions. First question. What were Paul and Silas doing while they sat in the prison cell? What? They were singing praises? Unbelievable. Why were Paul and Silas singing in the prison cell? Hmm. Yeah. Even though they were in this dark and horrible situation and very bad things could have been coming their way, they found their joy in God. They found their joy through Jesus. They could say that in the big picture of things, everything's all right, even though the situation kind of stinks, because there's Jesus and everything he's done for us. What did God do 
because of their songs of praise. Boom! He shook the prison. The doors flew open, and that caused the jailer to freak out a little bit. So what did the jailer try to do after the walls of the prison collapsed? He took his sword, and he thought, well, this is it. I might as well kill myself now, because I am in so much trouble. So then, if that's the place the jailer was at, he wound up having joy by the end of the story. How did the jailer receive joy? Yes, indeedy. Paul and Silas, our two heroes in the jail, they shared their joy, the good news of Jesus, with the jailer. And the jailer realized, well, these prisoners aren't leaving. They're not running away. I don't have to kill myself. And I've got this good news of Jesus. My whole household can be saved today. Let's do this thing instead. I like that idea. That's why he had joy. Can't blame him, huh? Wow. We knocked out another study already. Incredible. And it's been a fun one. I'm glad we got to end on the high note with joy. Always remember, you can find your joy in Jesus. He loves us, he's there for us, and he has already paid the price to cancel our sin and give us forever with him. That's cheerable. So now next week, we are going to get started on a new lesson series. This one is about the parables of Jesus. What's a parable? A parable is a story that Jesus would tell that had a meaning to it. It would be a story about digging up and hiding your treasures in a field or all these various different things. He would tell stories and people would listen and be all confused. But you know what? The stories had points if he chose to reveal those points to you. And we are going to learn some of those. They are awesome, fun, and useful stories. I can't wait! But for now, if you would like to find past lessons or materials to supplement the lessons, they can be found at the church's website at clevelandvineyard.com. Navigate on out there in your favorite browser of choice. Click on Ministries in the upper right side of the menu, then choose Kids slash Youth from the drop down. On the next page, there's a big old link that says something about the curriculum. You click on the curriculum and bang, you come up on the page with all of the various lessons. Please watch and enjoy at your leisure. I hope you can get something out of them. For now, we're out of here for another week. Peace, love, we out of here. Take care. This has been a presentation of Busby Productions. Ah!